Welcome to our program, Violence Free World. My name is Kali Ikwe, and I did promise to continue our conversation with High Chief Raymond Alejo Dupesi. He's still very much here, and the conversation continues. But guess what? We'll be right back after this. Don't go away. The role of the media has recently come under scrutiny following the protracted bloodletting and violence that has engulfed our country. This will not be that of video. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! It has come to the fore that issues such as hate speech, misrepresentation of fact, and bias reportage have ultimately added fuel to the ongoing fire. The mainstream media chooses which victim to victimize and which victim to support. That is why most of us, even as activists, did not say anything about the innocence. Many believe that the media has become an instrument of propaganda and blackmail, a trend that negates its traditional role of creating a peaceful and harmonious atmosphere. Why it may seem convenient to blame the largely unregulated social media there is abundant evidence that the traditional media, that is, radio, television and newspapers, more often than not, lend themselves to false bias and unconfirmed reports. This in itself has helped to escalate the ongoing violence in no small way. I am not saying that we should underreport crimes, but, but the more you give them those platforms, because they, they are calling for attention, the more they feel like they have succeeded or they are succeeding. So it's important for the media not only to do balancing, but also to be, to be more patriotic in its reportage of the entirety of the situation. Ethnic profiling, for instance, gained much ground from a reporting pattern that persisted unchecked for a long time. There is also the challenge of practitioners turning deaf ears to certain developments where sentiments and special interests are involved. The mainstream media are paid by the security apparatus, they are paid by corrupt government officials to, to keep quiet. They only talk on that which interests them and that which is their interest. That which is in their interest will attract the international media. Finally, just as some people have turned acts of violence like kidnapping, banditry, and even insurgency into a business, it is equally believed that the media could help bring about peace if professionalism, empathy, and patriotism are brought to bear on news reportage as we crave a violence-free Nigeria. Welcome back. Chief, now it's time to go straight into the conversation. A lot of people believe that the killings that are going on probably wouldn't be, have been as bad as this if uh, this supposed reign of impunity does not prevail. Do you share in that uh, position too? People well, kill and then nothing happens. Well, why do people kill? You see, what we always do in this country is to try to treat the symptom not the main cause. So let us go down to, this, uh, to the main cause of the problem. There is injustice. There is unfairness. A section of the country have been unfairly treated. A group of persons within the country have been unduly and unfairly treated. And they believe that every effort to seek attention, to have their issues discussed, people are not coming up. For those that have taken to arms, for those that are, have decided to balkanize Nigeria, all these separatist movements, Uddua Republic, Biafra, I hear there's something in the in the South-South as well. 
those are out of the pressures, out of a feeling that our people are not getting a fair share of in the Federal Republic. The issue of banditry, uh, religious extremism, and the others that we find in mostly the northern parts of Nigeria cannot be compared to those who want to pull out of Nigeria. These were again children of people who were not properly treated over a long period of time. And they have grown into millions now. And there's no hope for them. Whether they were misled, whether they were not, it is an issue of negligence by successive governments. Because not, it will not be fair and just in as much as I don't agree with a lot of the policies of the present administration. I don't think that they should be wholly held responsible. These are issues over years and which requires us to come back and sit down properly. The 2014 National Conference was going to give us a way to resolve it in a democratic manner. If it were the earlier years, the 60s, mid 60s, early 70s and 80s, there would have been a military coup. Maybe that would have solved the problem. Maybe. Yeah. Because the problem was created by the military, largely or so, a lot of people will say, by fiat. So why, do you, why are you we so hopeful that we can resolve it democratically? But you see, democratically, if we are Democrats, yes. not people who pretend to be Democrats, if we are actually Democrats, then we can sit down and in a civilized manner bring these issues to the table like it has been done in the 2014 uh, uh, National Conference, there were quite a lot of proposals. I understand that the LRUFI uh, committee also had a look at them from the APC perspective. But obviously, the leadership of APC do not believe in restructuring. And since we cannot go to war, we have to look for a president who believes, who is committed to restructuring. And we give him a mandate that within the first six months, we want a new constitution, a constitution which will be fair and just to all of us. But to say that we break out of Nigeria, how does that solve the problem? Who is going, Hi, Chief, who is going to give us a new constitution? Is it the present uh, set of National Assembly members as uh, prevalent or what? I would, I would be blunt and tell you that I personally do not have faith in this set of members of the National Assembly. If I say to that extent, to, to that extent, you probably may never have it because you can't have. You require the approval of the National Assembly for you to go that route. I am waiting for 2023 for us to have Nigerians who believe in Nigeria, who trust, who want a united Nigeria and not their own personal interests. Nigeria's politics now is covered by personal and uh, tribal or religious interests. We need a leadership that is dedicated, committed to the unity and stability of this country. Hi, Chief, I see you're, 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 you're counting so much on the political will of um, a particular person, a particular leader who is able to take on all of these things. Mm -hmm. they, they, they say all of that. I remember Muhammad Buhari before he became president. There's a whole lot that you ordinarily think he would not have condoned now. But it looks like there's something that happens when people sit there and suddenly they begin to see some things from some other prism in a manner that some of us who are outside of the corridors of power may not be able to understand. Even Kali. if it's you, we probably will be saying, well, look at what uh, Raymond Dupassi said. This is him here. What's going on, sir? Kali, Kali. Yes, sir. People have antecedents. I spoke very loudly and clearly about my knowledge and perception of the current president in 2013, 2014. And I drew attention to 
what happened in 1985 that led to his overthrow as president. But if that was what majority of the people decided, if they are now crying, I can only tell them that do the correct thing. Do what is right for the good of our people. Don't, don't determine the path of development based on your own personal interests, based on what you believe you will benefit. Let us all make sacrifices for the generations coming after us. Well, actually, there's so many, there are so many other contentious measures or issues that are coming up, but we're going to come back to the conversation and then have those discussions again. This is Violence Free World. I'm here with High Chief Raymond Dupassi, founder of Dark Communications PLC. I'll be right back after this time out. Don't go away. Welcome back. This is Violence Free World. Well, I thought um, I was putting someone on the hot seat and it seemed like I'm the one on the hot seat now. <laughs> Interesting. High Chief Raymond Alejo de Quesi is putting me on the spot radar. I thought I was asking the question, <laughs> High Chief. Now, there is this issue of a corporate conspiracy that's official conspiracy. That's conspiracy by, uh, from people who ordinarily should be part of the solution now becoming complicit in the adversity that we face. There are policemen involved using the, 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 their offices to, to cover crime or to perpetrate crime or uh, to be involved in kidnapping, involved, Ka all of that kind of stuff. Uh, Kali, they have been cited a lot. Kali, 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 Kali. Yes. If you set up a security council that is made up of people from only one part of the country, of people that are of the same religion, who are associated with the ideals of the people that are perpetuating the crime, what result do you hope to get? So they need, you need a broad solution. You need people who are committed to dealing with the problem. You don't pass, sweep anything underground. The people that are being killed in Southern Kaduna, that are being killed in Katsina, that are being killed in Kano, they are Nigerians, which you have an obligation to protect. That's contradictory, High Chief. When How? you say that you, you, you are selecting people from a particular side of the country whose ideas resonate with even the perpetrators of the crime, and yet you expect... I'm sorry, no, look at the, no, no, look you, at you. You, I, I, you just mentioned to me now that the victims are people from Kasina, people from Kaduna, the same northern people. So who is suffering? Yeah, but the, the bandits, are those northwest is where the, you have the banditry. So how the different is northwest from northeast? They are the same kinds of people. Oh, no, 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 they are not. They are not. You won't be fair. Tell me. The people in the Northwest, yes. the, the major issue they have right now yes. is not religious. It is not the, the issue of banditry. It's the issue of quest for gold. It is the issue for uh, mineral resources as you have them. And the people that are coming are coming. They are not Nigerians. They are outsiders and which this administration has admitted that they are outsiders. I get you. I understand. I get you. That. So this is all about resources at the end of the day. That's the end game. That's the end game. struggle for the uh, control of resources. By one hand, the one's yes. resources in the South, in your implementation of the Constitution and the rules that you have, you say it is Commonwealth, and then the ones that you have in the North, it now belongs to only a group of people. So the quest for it? Now let's look at solution now. Let's come back to us. What are we doing? Chief Alehu Dokwesi personifies media. What is the media 
doing to help? Do you think we are doing enough by way of reportage? Are we doing? Are we not sometimes uh, uh, sympathetic to certain? Because this same uh, sentiment runs through everywhere. It happens everywhere. That's why they say there's no there's no such thing as neutrality. No neutrality. You are either this way or that way. You can cover for some time. If you like, call it diplomacy. But somehow, we're just in one vicious cycle. So I think, but what do you think in your opinion? You are a media owner. So you are media. I'm looking at media now. What is media doing to help? Well, let me say that the media is doing its very best, but is cowed and subdued. The media, in my opinion, including AIT, Ray Power, they have failed the nation. The days where you had courageous reporters who stood for Nigeria and believed in Nigeria, they defended the ordinary person to the last of them, with the last blood in them. What has changed? Money. Money. The lack of resources to motivate the individual journalists or the... The journalists themselves. Yes. The journalists that are going out. Because in most cases, even the media owners don't see the money. <clears throat> so the journalists themselves that you assign are already will be taken over by those who want to push their agenda and what you just see on the screen or what you see on the pages of papers are mostly what those, the actors who now believe that they must have a group of editors, a group of in their class to, for propaganda purposes. And let me tell you that in the, in the days of Shegun Oshoba, uh, doing uh, Abiola, uh, Peter Enahuru, uh, uh, and the very Stanley Makebu, uh, there was investigative journalism. And people went to the bottom. It's not journalism of blackmail. I tell you, oh, I got this thing. You have to settle me behind and to, for me to be able to uh, leave that story. Or uh, don't play it down. Or take it this way or the other way. They gave it as it was. And they were courageous enough to sit back and look at issues. And provide solutions in the best interest of the nation. But today, people, you find uh, you need financial support, you have to bend this way or bend the other way. But I'm saying that not only the organizations, that even the reporters themselves, what you call a uh, brown envelope, what you on payroll, on sponsorships and everything. So you see people just, they know what is right. They know the truth. But they continue to sing praises where there are none. Where people need to be told the home truth. We must all join hands to salvage this country. The media, the politicians, the academia, all of us have to get together and salvage this country. Getting together and taste dialogue. What is the next question? How do we deploy, how best do we deploy dialogue to catch out to uh, uh, the unity that seemed to, to, to be working? <coughs> how do we deploy dialogue to catch out to uh, electoral violence? We're approaching 2023 general elections already. You're going to see what happens in the sub-elections that are coming and as you've been experiencing, there's never been one that's devoid of violence completely, even though that's very difficult to get on a even very normal circumstances. But how best can we deploy dialogue to get to that thing we're talking about? You see, dialogue, we have always dialogued in this country. We have always prepared a report. Tell me the one, one single one, a report that has been implemented. So people don't have faith anymore. There's no need for dialogue. It's jungle justice, take the, take, Take to arms and you will establish your case and then you give conditions and you sort out. But that is not how to manage the country. Dialogue is, there is no war you go to. There is no fight that you have. 
you must still come back to that round table. When people came back, came to a round table in 2014 and looked at the problems of the country and came up with some sort of recommendations, and one single person just came up, he said, thrash that whole thing. I don't care about it. One single person. The efforts of, of representatives of the 200 million people. That's the 2014 dialogue you're referring to. Before then, it's the same thing. That's why I said I don't want to limit myself to, so I, I don't sound like only... Like you're making a case for that particular because you were involved? No, 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 no not that, but that I'm making a case. That I'm criticizing only this administration. All the administrations before then, they had committees, they had... They never implemented that. Even in the party that I belong to, the People's Democratic Party, there were reports for reforms and everything, yet they were not implemented. So at all stages, that is the weakness of the Nigerian politician and policy makers. I, I believe those dialogues try to cater to this issue of uh, entitlement, rotational presidency, and the place of the minority. When I say entitlement, there are certain people that feel it is our rights, we need to be president now. And most times, when you, 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 these persons are either Yorubas, Hausas, and Igbos, what happens to the, the teams? What happens to the Nupe people? What happens to the, many other, to the Igalas, to the Baggy man, all of this, but what happened? Why, why is it always so? Well, let me say, a lot of people don't agree or don't like General Sani Abacha for the reasons that have been raised. But there's no person that is completely bad. True. President Abacha, in 1994-95, in his constitutional review, agreed that there be a rotational presidency in order to give everybody a sense of belonging. Everybody. Everybody, every geopolitical zone okay. in this country, including the minorities, a sense of belonging. And he said over a 30 years period It'll of the around. six job, let it go round. So the minorities will have a little bit of the power shift. The minorities and the, from each geopolitical zone. And that is the essence and the reason, the rationale, the reason the word for the idea of zoning. Otherwise, how will an Ogbea man, President Jonathan, come and say he's president of Nigeria? when you have the Yorubas, the Igbos, the Edistin. It is part of giving a sense of belonging that even if I don't become, be, become the president, you don't become the president, but one of the people that represent our, our group of minorities has become president. So it is not a matter of sense of belonging. It is true that Yes, people at different times and at different stages in pursuance of their own personal interests, not the interest of the nation, not the interest of the ordinary man, not the interest. They just want to retain that. They want to get to power because they can muzzle a number of people and they tell you that no, abandon that rotation and zoning principle, forgetting where the journey started from. You will recall, if you are matured enough, that there used to be a cap called power shift, which the Yorubas were wearing. You will recall that there was a time when even in the individual states, there was agitation for creation of states and so on, that this major group was oppressing the other. But the clear lesson we have seen from that is that states, people that used to be brothers and sisters, now see themselves as enemies. Take the case of Bayelsa and Rivers. Take the case of Cross River and 
acquire them. Take the case of well, Delta and Edo, they are still managing. Take the case of Oyo and Oshun. It is across the whole country. In the southern part of Nigeria, that we can see. In the northern part, it's not different. So what was supposed to uni unite us, to get us all together, and that one has become a big problem. The cost of running this inefficient system has become humongous, out of uh, this thing. Today, we are almost spending every 85 cobo, 90 cobo in servicing over, for overhead purposes. We can barely get money for capital development. And unless we develop, then we cannot sustain over a long time. Well, hi Chief, I think that's a very, very good point to leave it. Happy birthday again, hi Chief. Thank you very much. All right, this has been our show today. My name is Kali Ikwe. Same time next week promises much more if you endeavor to be here. Until then, remember to remain on the road to a violence-free Nigeria. Thank you for watching. No more.